Oh, man, this place is doing my head in. It's like being back at school. Do you know what I mean, Carl? Well, it's not the most pleasant room in the world, I'll give you that. Where's the love? This that's what's doing them a favour. At least lay on a few comfy seats and some decent Wi-Fi. Well, hopefully. Oh. We won't be here for much longer. Better not be. I got plans. Hey, Bob. <coughs> you uh, up to anything tonight? Uh, I had a thought. Me and my mates were heading down a crush. Do you know where? Uh, not really. I'm, I mean, I've driven past, but it doesn't look like my sort of place. So where would I find you on a Friday night then? Um, I'm not sure. Orchester, maybe. Tristan, is that where you're sitting? Why? Aren't I supposed to be? No, no. Um, do you mind if I sit next to you? Uh, excuse me, Dennis. Can I just squeeze by? Of course, sir. Ta. No, you're right, Lisa. One of the lads from the Aperture asked me flat out the other day. You've heard about the case on the local news. Well, my eldest is the same. It's all very well them telling us we can't talk to no one, but I ain't gonna lie. And now I'm thinking, well, what if he's been bragging to his friends in the playground and they've told one of the teachers? No, no. Well, am I gonna get in trouble too? Look, it was Martin's own fault for sending that tweet, or whatever it was. We've been warned often enough. No, I know, but I can't stop my Aidan going on the internet. How am I meant to know what he's getting up to while I'm stuck here? Oh, well, is this your uh, kids you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, hello, yeah. like Pavin. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you find someone to collect them from school? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a friend gave them their tea. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, makes me realise how lucky I am. If there's ever a problem with my lot, Nana Sajuda's yeah. always there to look after them. <laughs> really? <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> I suppose that's one good thing about having such big families all living under one roof. Absolutely. <laughs> Although, believe me, it does have its downsides. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, sorry, that's um, Holly's chair. Isn't that right, Holly? Uh, what's that, Lisa? You're sitting here? No, no, Parveen can sit there. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, did you understand what the judge was saying? Listening up? <laughs> yeah. I think so. <laughs> I don't know why I'm surprised. You must have to have a lot of brains to be an architect. Architectural assistant. I don't qualify till next year. Yeah, but still... I was following it for a while, but then he started explaining about the different charges and I just got so confused. I wouldn't worry. That's why there's 12 of us. Yeah. Sorry, 11. Have you already made up your mind? <laughs> when the prosecution chap finished, I was sure she was guilty, but then the lady barrister started talking and completely changed my mind. It was like with a referendum. I didn't know who to believe. What do you think? Is she guilty or not? Well, if you want to know my opinion... Naughty, naughty. No. We haven't started deliberating yet. Here we go. Oh. Morning, Jackie. <laughs> and Justice Loomis was quite emphatic. We shouldn't discuss the case in small groups. No. Sorry. Not that it'll make much difference now. Mm -hmm. I've already had a little bet with myself on what each of us will think. Mm -hmm. Have you really? Right then. Can I take a stick? No, no, I can manage to... Excuse me, um, I won't be cowed by a shoddy knee joint. Please, please, can I have your attention? <coughs> thank you, everyone, thank you, thank you. Unless anyone has any objections, I'd like to put myself forward as foreman. There, any reason being, as part of my job, I'm used to chairing lots of meetings. What is it you do again? I'm chief exec of a local housing association. Oh, right. Well, then, sure. Makes sense to me. Go for a mate. You sat in the top chair anyway. That's great. Hold on. Uh, sorry. What happened there? Uh, we've just agreed I should be foreman, Jackie. Uh, uh, don't fret. You haven't missed anything important. But wouldn't we like to discuss it further? Uh, oh. Why? <laughs> Carl reckons he's the best man for the job. Yes, but somebody else might want it. I didn't hear anyone speak up. That's fine. That, that's fine. I was just <coughs> trying to make things simple. Right, is anyone else harbouring a burning desire to be foreman? Or for a woman? I oh, know I'm not. No, nor me. Look, Jackie, if you want to do it... I didn't say that. No, but you're obviously keen. Hey, Tris, why aren't you volunteering? You've got natural authority. Me? <clears throat> no. We could take a vote on it. Holly, yes, all those who think me. Carl will make the best foreman, raise your hand. Oh. <laughs> and anyone who thinks it should be Jackie? <laughs> no, no, there's clearly no need. I was only posing the question... If everyone else is happy, let's just move on. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Jackie. <clears throat> right. I thought we might start by quickly taking the temperature of the room. You never know. We might find we all agree on the same verdict. <laughs> we should be so lucky. Yeah, well, shall we go round the table? Who'd like to speak first? Tony, there you are. I was starting to worry where you'd got to. Sorry, love. Mum wouldn't stop talking, and then Jennifer wanted a word as well. Oh, is she at the lodge? Oh, no, no. Mum's over at home farm. But who's Tom on the phone to? Neil. He wanted to check he knew there's a feed delivery oh, today. Right. And Johnny and Kirsty have nipped over to the cafe. 
Tony, are you going to sit down? I don't think I can. I've been wondering if I ought to fit the baby seat in the car. What now? It's been a while since we used it for Henry, and if Jack does come home today, Helen won't want to be faffing around with seat belts. No, Tony. What happens if the jury come back while you're over in the car park? Oh, you're right. I was being stupid. It'd be even worse if we had to take the seat out again. Not that I think that's what's going to happen. No, I know. Not after Anna's closing statement. I thought she made it absolutely clear. It's up to the prosecution to prove Helen wasn't acting in self-defence. After everything the jury's heard, how could any of them possibly think she wasn't? So what about the video, then? A little boy uh, plainly said he saw his mum stab his all, dad. All right, OK. He said nothing about that. Let's keep going round the table. But why would he remember one thing and not the other? Dennis, you'll get your chance to speak. Now, that's four saying guilty and one against. Blake? Make a five. I mean, seriously, one more could she have done to the poor bloke to be guilty? Now, OK, so maybe she didn't mean to kill him. She gave it a good shot, though. Let's go with the other charge. Wounding with intent? Yeah, I don't care. At least then it's over and done with. It'd be crazy if she didn't get locked up for something, though. OK. Parveen, what do you think? Parveen? Yes, uh, sorry. I genuinely wish I knew. <laughs> um, I, no, I can see the point about her son, and it's not as if she's saying she didn't do it. Exactly, Dennis. But then also, she, she also says her husband did horrible things to her, and his first wife said almost exactly the same. I, I don't know. I, I was married when I was 23. It's hard to imagine being in that sort of relationship. Maybe at a push, I'd say... Wounding with intent. <laughs> so, guilty, then? Yes, but I, I, I really don't know. That's my honest answer. OK. okay. And Lisa, what do you think? She tried to kill him. I don't get why some people are being so squeamish. We haven't all led cosy, perfect little lives. Still doesn't mean we've gone out and stabbed someone. Oh, for... Excuse me? Yeah, thank you, Lisa. No, I don't know what she meant by that. Do I don't you? think Jackie meant anything. Well, maybe she can't hear herself, but we can all see you rolling your eyes. Well, I just don't understand how you can dismiss the evidence so blithely. Come on, it's it's it. Dennis's turn. It's Let plain to me the defendant you know has been through a great over. deal. This is a woman who claims she was repeatedly raped. Yeah, claims. Who may have survived months of slow, insidious psychological abuse. Oh, you believe that? Well, you'd have to be a fan of the trashiest brand of detective fiction to think she was some kind of scheming, malevolent yeah, murderer. All right, Jackie. What's that supposed to mean? Is she guilty or not? Not guilty, obviously. How could anyone listen to the evidence properly and conclude otherwise? Well, so far, love, you seem to be in the minority. Or are we all just wrong? OK, OK. It's not about right or wrong. Oh, look, it's clearly not a complicated case. It's about what can be proven. But I agree we with Jackie. To this is a trial. To first. Come on, guys. Hush about. now. Listen to Tristan. Well, go on, mate. Speak up. I've already said. Not guilty. Very good. Not, not guilty. guilty. Holly. Seriously. Dennis. No, it's a genuine question. This is someone who actually threatened to kill her husband. Sorry, Holly. That's OK. She said it in front of witnesses. One of them was her own mother. No, I know. But if she genuinely meant to kill him, why on earth would she announce it to everyone? You must have a gut feeling, though. I really it don't. Doesn't Do you mind? Sense. I was asking this don't young man. Don't be shy. Everyone else has given their opinion. I just... I'm honestly not sure. I just think there had to be something else going on. Of course there was. He was trying to pack her son off to boarding school. Oh, it's all so upsetting. Only because he thought we would be for the best. And Parveen's not I wish my either. kid dad cared that Are much. You no, I'm not certain at all. And at the very least, it shows she's got a short temper. It's OK not to know, isn't it? She lost her head once and then she went... OK, and OK, head. we're not going to get anywhere if we talk over each other. So let's just move on. Whoa, whoa. You're the boss. You haven't told us what you think. But I think the mood in the room is leaning towards a guilty verdict. How do you work that out? By my reckoning, we have three for not guilty and two undecided. Well, yes, thank you, Jackie. I can keep count. What I was going to suggest... Maybe it would be worth reminding ourselves of what legally constitutes self-defence. Mm. Uh, I wrote down the judge's word. Yeah, and if we think we need to, we can always go over it, Jackie. Ah, that. The defendant had to have a genuine belief that she or her son were yes, in danger. Yes, yes, but for the time being... And though, that she used I'd like to do something force. else. We were all there for the summing up. No, but this is really vital. Jackie, to find Mrs Titchener guilty, oh, Jackie, the prosecution please. has to prove that this wasn't the case. I know you have lots to say, but we were all listening very carefully. Here, here. Yeah, too right. Yes, but Now I suggest we follow the judge's example and go through the evidence step by step. Maybe that'll help us identify the key points of difference. So, what do we definitely know? She almost killed him, we know that. And she threatened to do it, whether she meant it or not. All right, but... She did say it. 
I think we can all agree on that. What else? We know she was preparing to leave. She'd packed a bag for her and her little boy. And she'd arranged to be picked up by a friend. Are we certain about that? Uh, I think so. The policeman who gave evidence. Oh, yeah, PC Burns. Yeah, he said he saw the bag in the bedroom. But when did she pack it? At the very least, there were ten minutes between the call to Miss Miller and her ringing the ambulance. And we know she didn't ring it herself. Hang on, though. I thought her husband found the bag. That's what she claimed. But he says he knew nothing about it. Dennis is right. She could have packed it after she stabbed him. Maybe she and her friend were planning on running away together. Martin did reckon they were lesbians. Oh, oh God. God. What? It's a possibility. You know, you're going to get charged with contempt, too. So. Yeah, the point is, we can't know for certain when or why Mrs Titchener packed her bag. Only that it was on the bed when the police arrived. What else? We know she definitely called a helpline. Why would she do that unless she'd been suffering from abuse? For an alibi. An alibi? Yeah, maybe. We know her and her friend were conniving together. We heard how she put the idea in her head. And let's not forget she wasn't well. She'd already been in hospital because of problems with the baby. Uh, It wasn't the baby exactly. She had anemia. Sorry, what's that? It means you haven't got enough iron in your system. Yeah, and why not? Because she was starving herself. Her mother-in-law said how difficult it was getting her to eat. Well, you should remember, she does have a history of anorexia. Oh, I don't care what she says she's got. Who puts their baby at risk like that? Look, she obviously has mental issues. Um, They'd put her on tablets and her hormones must have been all over the place. They were oh, antidepressants. Please, and, and not she, that old She'd only just not. started taking them. Being pregnant doesn't make you mad. Have you had kids? No. Sorry, but, but this is uh, important So you say, don't know, do you? Uh, may I? I... Look, I trained as a pharmacist, and those types of antidepressants take a long while to work. It's highly unlikely they'd have any severe psychological side effects. Really? Well, I only know what I know, and as a mother, I wouldn't have let them give me anything while I was pregnant. Fine, fine. So we know she was being treated for ongoing mental problems. Why, though? Isn't that what we should be asking? And we will do. Couldn't the depression have been caused by what her husband was doing? He did admit to slapping her. Yes, that we can be certain of. It was one time. And he did seem genuinely mortified. If you believe him. I'm sorry, but can we stick to establishing the facts? Yeah, Tristan, pipe down. I think we can take it as read. There were issues with their marriage. (sighs) Blake, you look like you've been wanting to say something. Me? Mm. Uh, no, not really. I just think it's kind of suspicious she refused to answer the cops' questions. You only do that when you've got something to hide. Yeah, I have to admit, it's one of the main things that's been troubling me. I mean, if everything she's accused her husband of... Was she was traumatised. Mm. She was in shock. No, I know. How I know. can any of us be sure but, how but, we'd react? Please, just hear Parveen out. Yeah, it just seems so self-defeating. If it was yeah. true, she'd have come out with it straight away. She was about to give birth. She had a five-year-old back at home. You'd admit anything, wouldn't you? Not wait for the trial to tell the whole world some sob story about being raped. Oh, Lisa, don't. He really describe all that stuff. I wish I hadn't had to listen. It was so horrible. Uh, OK. Well, I think we've covered all the most indisputable elements. Uh, wait, isn't anyone going to mention the ex-wife? I'd have thought she corroborates a great deal. I'm not sure corroborates is the right word. No. But so much of her evidence is the same. The rape, the, the controlling behaviour... The way he isolated all them right, both. All right. let them have their own money. Exactly. Uh, and we have to decide if it's true. Even then, I'm not sure it proves anything. How could it not? Well, legally, I mean. Uh, the only things we know for certain are that Mrs Titchener was psychologically unwell. Maybe, they put but... a great deal of pressure on their marriage. No, no, and you're on implying one occasion, that her husband resorted to slapping her. Well, you can't say it was because of her illness. Do you mind? Let him finish. We haven't heard any definitive evidence he was regularly violent, although the defendant did vow that she'd kill him. We also know she and her friend arranged several clandestine meetings and Miss Miller gave her a second mobile phone. Yes, yes, all right. Other than that, we know that she stabbed him, that his injuries could have been fatal, that she didn't call for an ambulance or talk to the police. And her son says his father didn't threaten him. As for what else happened that night, it's just her word against his. And yet he's the one who still can't walk properly. But surely that's precisely where his ex-wife's evidence comes to bear. Oh, for goodness sake, what was her name? Oh, this is why I write Never mind. Down. No, no, this is crucial. Oh, Who, the ex-wife? Right. Yes. Jessica Myers. That's right. What does Miss it Myers. matter what she bloody said? It doesn't change anything. I think what Dennis means to say is that two wrongs don't make a right. That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. Even if these women are telling the truth, they should have shocked him and he should have been charged. They should lock him up and throw away the key. But I've managed an apertoire for going on 20 years. I know what it takes to push a knife into muscle to find the space between the ribs and cut through sinew. Mm. Blimey, don't mess with Dan. And I've heard nothing, absolutely nothing, about what he did that night that justifies her doing that to him. Please, could I... There's always some excuse, isn't there? 
Whether it's clever lawyers or lying politicians, it's one rule for them and another for the rest of us. No wonder the country decided we were sick of it. Well, some things you can't get away with. <clears throat> well, thank you, Dennis. I'm sure you're not the only one who shares that sentiment. I'm asking you all, are we seriously going to let her get away with this? Helen. Oh, sorry. It's fine, Anna. Come on in. Are you sure? I don't want to wake him. No, don't worry. I thought I'd check how you were now that the jury have broken for lunch. I'm OK. Honestly. I'm just trying to memorise every moment. How Jack feels in my arms. How his tiny fingers fit round my thumb. I see. You know, when he's sleeping like this, he looks so much like my dad. I don't know, I'd realised it before. No? No. Not until I gave my evidence. How Jack was conceived was only a few minutes. And now that it's all out in the open, I can just concentrate on making the most of the time we still have. Whatever happens. Helen, I have done my best for you. You do know that. Oh, I know. And I think we're in with a really good chance. I admit, before Jess came forward, I was worried. Anna, but now, please... I can't think about that. No, all right, but... It's I... out of my control. Rob took that away a long time ago. But he can't take this, though. It doesn't matter that I'm locked in a tiny room. Does it, Jack? No. This moment is mine. And it's what's going to see me through. I tried so hard to be strong in that witness box, and I won't give Rob the satisfaction of not being prepared for the worst. No, 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 you can <coughs> tell. It was a performance. Oh. She'd got all her lines prepared. There could be other reasons for that, though. It must be so nerve-wracking giving evidence. I'm only giving my opinion. I, I know, I If know, you I were saying this comes down to who we believe, well, I'm sorry, I don't believe her. And I thought she was cold too, but we can't find her guilty based on the tone of her voice. <laughs> Look, I don't know where you're from, but I live in the real world. I'm sorry? I used to clean houses for people like her. What sort of people are they? Posh. Like Dennis said. Used to always get in their own way. Oh, no, honestly. And then, when it dawns on her, she might have pushed it too far this time. No, she no. She turns on the wall works and starts saying she was raped. Oh. That really is quite absurd. She's not privileged. She's a store manager, isn't she? Mm. We used to go into their shop on the high street. Yeah, she works on the family farm. Yeah, but it was really hard getting a job off her parents. Well, listen, let's not get distracted. My mum was the same. Acting outraged, like her daughter was all innocent, even when she knew what she said. So what about her character witnesses, then? Uh, yes, um, Ian Craig and Neil Carter. What about them? I wouldn't call them posh, and they both agreed she's a perfectly decent person. And a devoted mother. All the prosecution can do is try and smear one of them for being gay. <laughs> Did it? No, no, nothing. It all just seems a little bit suspect to me. Why? Because he's gay? No. They can live how they like. But when you put it all together, them being best friends and then falling out, her giving her boy his name. The sperm donor. Exactly. That's meant to help couples who can't have kids by themselves. What's so wrong with her she couldn't find a bloke of her own? Is this getting us any closer to reaching a verdict? Well, it goes to show, doesn't it? Most fellas had the brains to steer clear. Oh, that's a bit harsh. Mr Titchener obviously didn't see a problem. No, and she didn't see a problem sinking her claws into a married man. <coughs> There's some places in the world she'd have been flogged. What on earth has that got to do with anything? Well, you seem so keen to defend her. No, I just... I it's think a good thing we're in a British court, or you won't be allowed. No, no, no. Uh, all right, all right, let's try to remain civil. Oh, oh. Yes, Blake, you've got your hand up. How much longer is this going to take? I'm busting for the loo. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 fair enough. I expect we could all benefit from a break. It's been what, nearly an hour since lunchtime. Shall we say back in five minutes? Sure. Yeah, good idea. <clears throat> well done, guys. <clears throat> My bladder thanks you. I think I'll go as well. You know, I've been meaning to say, Parveen... That's a beautiful headscarf you're wearing. Oh, well, Very thanks. elegant. Excuse me, can I just... Hmm? It's my handbag. It's right around the left of your chair. All right, um... All right. Sorry. Thank you. Well, I don't know about anybody else, but I can do with the coffee. Yeah, me too. Can I get anyone anything while I'm up? No, no, thank you, Holly. That's kind, but I'll sort myself out. Tristan? No, I'm fine, thanks. Oh, OK, then. So, Parveen, you're a pharmacist. Mm. Whereabouts did you study? One of these other chips coffee. Yeah, but it's almost empty now. 
Here, pass it to your cup. Oh, thank you, Dennis. My pleasure. Have you been on a jury before? Me? No, no, never. I really didn't think everyone would get so touchy. Well, you're always going to get a few awkward ones, aren't you? You can't expect for not to have strong opinions. That's my problem. I don't have a strong opinion about anything. <laughs> no, I'm serious. My friends make fun of me for it. Like, with all the stuff around Brexit, there was so much squabbling and everyone blaming each other and mm. saying they were stupid and out of touch. I just assume most people are going to be really nice. I'm the stupid one, aren't I? No. A bit too trusting, maybe. Yeah, I guess. That's why I was scared about being on a jury. I mean, what if we get the verdict wrong? It's going to affect so many lives. That's the system. No, I know. It feels like way too important decision to be left up to us. Look, we're not really supposed to talk about it on our own. Oh, sorry. No, no. Just try not to fret about it. All you can do is what your conscience is telling you. That's what I'm doing, and I plan to sleep at night. Jackie, do you need a hand? No, no. Accepting help is tantamount to admitting defeat. Well, here's a stick. I'll leave it there. <laughs> but you can catch me when I fall. Bobby, are you getting a, a drink as well? Oh, yeah, I was. Uh, you... Could I have a quick word? Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to say how sorry I am the way Lisa spoke to you. Oh, Unfortunately, it's... she has not much right to be on a jury as the rest of us. <laughs> I hope it won't affect the way you're thinking about the case. Uh, affect it? I, I don't think I follow. Well, I just mean we shouldn't let any personal feelings towards certain jurors sway our decision. After all, even if we don't approve of the reasoning, it doesn't mean their final conclusion is wrong. So you agree with Lisa? Oh, good Lord, no, no. She's just a sort of bigoted woman. But, but you do think the verdict should be guilty? Of what, Carl? Attempted murder? Look, we should be having this conversation around the table. I've been doing my little best not to be biased. No, I However, I do think what you said about the defendant making no comment to the police was absolutely spot on. However much I tried putting myself in her shoes, it beggars belief she wouldn't say anything. It is very hard to understand. Well done, Carl. Dennis, bet you wish you'd never volunteered to be foreman, no? Uh, not so terrible. Still, you're doing a great job keeping us all in check. Well... Particularly one of our more senior members. <coughs> Don't you think so, Bobby? You'd think they might at least provide decaf. Some of us here are quite stimulated enough. I know. My blood pressure's still not coming down. Bless you. I should have smuggled in some of my homemade cookies. They have a special ingredient that would help you calm down. I beg your pardon? Sadly, a cup of builder's tea will have to do. Look, careful, Jackie. Did you hear that? Yeah. Although I wouldn't have had it down as a baker. <laughs> I'm glad you're upset, too. Well, I'm more than upset. I'm ashamed. If this is meant to be a cross-section of British society, people like Dennis and Lisa haven't got a clue. Well, Dennis can be sweet. What is it they don't have a clue about? I said, never mind. No, come on, what? Tristan, please tell me. There's a friend of mine. She had this boyfriend. Well, fiancé, actually. We've been best mates since uni, but after she met him, we suddenly lost touch. Sad about it, but our lives seem to be going in separate directions. She was planning a wedding, talking about children. I just figured people change. And one day she turns up at my door with bruises on her face and her arm in a sling. He pushed her down the stairs. Oh my god! Seriously? So when Dennis says there's no excuse for stabbing someone, I wish my friend had had a knife on her before he did that to her. That's just terrible. You should say something. It might help people see things differently. See what differently, Holly? Well, Tristan's friend, her fiance, pushed her down the stairs. It's all right. We weren't discussing the case no. specifically. Okay, but we still ought to be careful. We're not supposed to discuss anything that hasn't been presented in court. Well, no, all right. But if Tristan's got personal experience, I know. I, know, I think it's staff too. But the rules are the rules. Yeah, sure. And I'd but... hate to see you find yourself in contempt like Martin did. There's a good girl. Oh, that's better. Well, I cut me fine. If I'd held on any longer, I'd have tie a knot in it. <laughs> Look at Tris's face. Never mind, mate. We can't all be gifted. Yeah, it's not that. Well done for standing up for that gay witness, by the way. Good for you. Well, I think I'm going to sit down. Oh, right. Hey, Holly, um, still haven't told me what you're doing this evening. I think I'll probably stay in. On a Friday night? Excuse me. What you need, Holly, is someone to show you how to have fun. A word of the wise, a little subtlety mightn't go amiss. You reckon? Not that I'm blaming you. It's been nice to have something pretty to look at these last few days. Oi, oi. 
Isn't that a wedding ring on your finger? Uh, yes, it is. Right, so you can look, but uh, don't touch. We've been divorced for a while. And you really wear it to remind me of my kids. What do you make of it so far? Belligerent bunch, aren't they? Oh, if you say so. I gave up trying to figure out what anyone was saying days ago. Just don't see why they have to make everything so complicated. She stabbed him, right? He didn't have the knife to her throat. He weren't holding her hostage. No, I know. I thought we'd be out of here by now. That's probably my fault. I should be doing a better job. No, don't blame yourself. No, no, but maybe with your help, we can speed things along. Yes, an old postgrad student of mine has been up at Bradford for years in the Faculty of Social Sciences. I wouldn't know, as pharmacists tended to keep ourselves to ourselves. No, of course. Though we were chatting over the summer. He's terribly worried about where his funding is going to come from now. And so much of his research is in partnership with other universities across Europe. Oh. For once, I'm glad I'm retired. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Right, we're ready to carry on. <clears throat> Hang on, what about Lisa? Don't panic. There she comes. Blake, is there space next to you? Where I'm sitting at the moment, there's a table leg in the way. Yeah, yeah, sure. Cheers. <coughs> OK, then. <coughs> I'm going to suggest now might be a good time to take stock and find out if anyone's changed their position. So, let's put the alternative charges to one side and focus on guilt. <coughs> Can we believe, beyond reasonable doubt, Mrs Titchener was acting in self-defence. There you go again. We keep getting this wrong. Oh, yes, all right, Jackie. The question is, are we certain she wasn't? Uh, for all intents and purposes, it's the same difference. But it's not. Lisa, since you're on the end now, let's start with you. Fine by me. I've not changed my mind. Guilty. Thank you. Blake? Me neither. Guilty. And Parveen? You don't have to explain yourself, and, and don't let anyone else influence you. No, I, I know, I know. I, I'm still very torn, but... If I'm being forced to give an answer... Oh, come on. ...then not guilt. Oh, oh, I'm, so, oh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I just don't think she's a terrible person. Some of you are making her out to be. But what about the evidence? Yeah. No, no, you're, you're right. We, we shouldn't judge her based on our own prejudices. And I know you think she's guilty. That's fine. I, what? I didn't actually say I no, thought you... you implied. Have the two of you been discussing this between no, yourselves? No, of course no, not. not really. It was more to do with the process. But you were just having a go at us for talking about Tristan's friends. Really? What friend? I wasn't having a go. Tristan, tell them. She was in an abusive relationship for almost two years. Yes. I helped her recover. And all I said was that we're not allowed to consider outside information. Only if it's directly connected to the case. We can share our experiences. That's what I said. The same as Parvey. All right, all Parvey. right. I think it's a case of... We elected Carlos Foreman. He's doing his... In, in, interpreting the judge's instructions. Except when you're having secret conversations with Parvey. Maybe that's who we should be asking. It was hardly secret, Jackie. It's clear we can't agree. No, no, it was a slip-up, that's all. What's that, Tristan? So you do think she's guilty, then? I'm just saying maybe we should ask Judge Loomis for guidance. Great I... idea. And how long will that take? We haven't finished going around the table yet. We're all right, yet. fine. Let's ask the judge. I'll write him a note saying we still haven't been able to reach a verdict. By the sounds of it, we're even further away than we started. Exactly. We'll see what advice he has for us, and then we'll take it from there. What's she saying? Don't worry, sweetheart. We're OK. Oh, yes. We're fine. We're still here. Tony, how can she smile? She's a brave woman, our daughter. Yes, but if it isn't the verdict, how much longer are we going to be waiting? What else could it be? I suppose it's more complicated with the two different charges. But if they find her not guilty of one, then they have to find her not guilty of the other. Oh, I know. Well, that's right, isn't it? Yes, I think so, but we don't know that that's what this is about. We'll just have to see. All rise. Mr Bywater, Mr Gorin, I'm sorry to have kept you, but I was dealing with another case. <clears throat> Regarding this one, the jury have sent me a note saying that as yet they've been unable to reach a unanimous verdict and are therefore seeking my advice. Given the lack of specific detail in the note, I'm minded to accept a majority verdict. The jury have been deliberating for considerably more than the two hours, ten minutes required before such a direction can be given. Although, because there are now 11 jurors, the only majority verdict available is by 10 to 1. Now, unless there are any objections, I'm minded to proceed 
along those lines. All right? Very good. In that case, could you please bring the jury back in? Yeah, but we do have a majority. Sort of. <coughs> How do you work that out? Well, now we know cars in the guilty camp. You are, aren't you, mate? Oh, I suppose there's no point trying to remain neutral. So that makes six of us. Forget what the judge says. If we all agree to fall in behind the side with most no, votes... No, no, How's no. that not democratic? Absolutely not. The whole reason we have the jury system is because some decisions are too important to be passed by a simple majority. So what happens if we can't make a decision? What, and just let her walk free? That's not what I meant. Then there'd have to be a retrial. With a new jury. There'd be 12 other people sat in this room, all probably having the same debate. No bloody way. After all the time I've had to take off from work... I've not seen my kids off to school for the last five days. And what about the cost? It's our money paid for all these lawyers flouncing around in their wigs. How much of our taxes has been spent on them already? Hey, so then, what's the alternative? Well, we have to keep on talking, don't we? I mean, what else can we do? <clears throat> so, what do we want to talk about? Well, I'd like to hear more about Tristan's friend. Oh. Yes, me too. I know you don't think it's relevant. It's not so much what I think. But that's for us to decide. And it's not like we're making much progress anyway. No, that's true. Might as well. All right, fine. Go ahead. Yeah, come on, Tris. Let's hear your story. Um, as I was saying before, my friend had been abused for two years before her fiancé pushed her down the stairs. Probably sounds a bit odd, but now she says it was the best thing that could have happened. Till then, she hadn't realised how bad it had got. I suppose that's the point, really. None of us did. We thought she was blissfully happy. Her parents were sending out invitations for the wedding. Sounds like she got out just in time. And? Is that it? Um, I guess. Well, I hope I was worth waiting for, Holly. Except that she still isn't over it. It took months for her to feel she could open up. I'd sit with her night after night, talking it through. Did you really? And so many of the things she told me in private chimed with what Helen Titchener said in the witness box. The way he constantly undermined her, the way he convinced her everything was her fault. And my friend would get up early to shower and dress her. Her fiancé wouldn't be upset by seeing the bruises that he'd left on her. Oh, dear Lord. That was the worst part. She was so desperate to cling on to the man she thought he was... She hid it from everyone, including herself. So what did you do when she told you? Did you give him a taste of his own medicine? Of course not. Really? See, if I was me, I'd have gone straight over to his place and shown him how a real man uses his fists. I did try to convince her to go to the police. The police? What would I have done? She probably couldn't prove anything anyway. Sorry, but isn't that exactly the point? How can you prove it? Yes, it's an excellent point. Let's not forget you were only hearing one side of the story. I know from my own job, domestic abuse can be... Uh... Well, a very grey area. I'm sorry, what? A grey area? Absolutely. So, if a man thumps a stranger in the street, it's assault. But if he does it to his girlfriend no, no. behind closed doors, that's somehow Look, different. I thought we were sharing our experiences, in which case, might I be allowed to share mine? Now, my housing association has to deal with these situations every day. Women claiming they need accommodation to escape violent partners. Wives demanding that we evict their husbands. And then, when you look deeper into it, the picture's usually far more complicated. I bet your friend didn't find herself homeless, did she? No. no. Could I finish? She stayed with me. Yeah, try finding a place when you've got a baby and a toddler to think about. When all your benefits look, are going on Lisa, then. please, if I may... Because useless father has spent all of his money on cheap Polish lard. Oh. Oh, is that what happened to you? Look, it's always the man's fault, isn't it? Hmm? Women can behave how they like. They can demean and humiliate. They can use their children as blackmail. But if a man should see red for just a few seconds, well, God help him for responding the way he was built. That's what I mean by a grey area. Can I drag our attention back to the case? Yes, please do. <clears throat> no one's denying terrible things happen, but in none of the examples we've talked about did the woman almost kill her husband. Hmm. It's like we keep forgetting. No, not at all. I've already admitted I'll accept he might not be blameless. So then you're obliged to accept she might not be guilty. Can the man not get a word in? Well said. No, not when I repeatedly try to make the same point and I keep being prevented. Now, we've been told explicitly that to find Mrs Titchener guilty, we must be certain she wasn't defending herself. Yes. But if we think there's even a chance she might have believed her son was in danger, then we have no choice but to find her not guilty. 
That's why we're talking about cases like Tristan's poor friend, because we need to understand why a woman like Mrs Titchener might have behaved the way she did. So, essentially, we have to know what was going on in her head. Yes, precisely. <laughs> with that logic, you could get away with anything, as long as you believed something happened. No, now you're simply. Maybe I'm missing something, but where's the justice in that? It's justice because it's founded on hundreds of years of jurisprudence. It's justice because of centuries of legal precedent, scholarly debate, not to mention decades of hard-fought reform. Oh, please. Jurist war. The judge just didn't pluck his instructions out of thin air. And as citizens of the same country, it's our duty to follow them. You are kidding me. So-called experts without the slightest clue what it's like to live in the real world, thinking they know best about how the rest of us should be governed. Well... At least here in this room, ordinary folks still get to make the decision. Oh, give me a break. What was that, sir? I said, give me a break. It drives me insane, people going on about the real world. Who doesn't live in the real world? Just because you don't like the fact some people might be more educated than you and actually know what they're talking about. And that's you, is it? Did I say that? OK, Tris, calm down. Yeah, Tris, calm down. And you? Listen up. You're a real man, are you? <laughs> and I don't care if the defendant wasn't acting in self-defence. He obviously raped her, just like he did to his ex-wife. He's clearly someone who gets off on controlling and bullying and pulling the wool over everyone's eyes. Fine, fine. And if we're we taking the, the law into our own hands, I couldn't <laughs> care less if she's guilty. He only got what he deserved. Tough guy. Blake, stop being such a child. You're impressed by that, do you? You do realise you're not his type. Hey, yeah, okay. That's enough. Hey. Blake, grow up. <laughs> uh, I think what Tristan is attempting to say is that we have to respect the judge's instructions. If we can't agree to do that, how are we ever going to agree on anything? We could be sending this woman to prison for years. Please, let's at least take it seriously. Absolutely. In which case, how can any of us be sure she wasn't defending herself? The similarities between the two testimonies must at least make you doubt. Not particularly. Really? And not even the details of the rape allegations. No. The way they both said he held them down by their wrists. No. How he told them they enjoyed it afterwards. What would you know? Aren't you supposed to obey your husband? <laughs> oh, I just don't believe it was that bad. All right, so how come you're so prepared to believe him? He seems like a decent sort of fella. <laughs> Look, listen, there are plenty of other women mm. who would have him. Cares about mm. his kids, isn't short of a few bob. That doesn't mean he didn't abuse her. What, and you don't think there are people who've had it a lot worse? Oh, look, the father of my two, he didn't even come to the hospital when I was giving birth. As soon as I was back home, though, he still wanted sex, and I couldn't say no neither because of what he'd do to me. But Lisa, that's dreadful. Why didn't you leave? Oh, God, it's, it's all right for you. you. You're a sweet girl, but you've got every bloke at this table following you around on a loop. <laughs> <laughs> look, who could I go to? The police aren't any help. Or social services. You heard what Carl said. No, no, Lisa, please don't misinterpret what I was saying. And Dennis, he was right. Ain't no one going to listen to someone like me. At times I would have loved to have stabbed my partner, but I'm never going to get a fancy lawyer now, am I? I just had to put up with it because that's what a real mum has to do. Lisa, I sympathise. Of course, I'm sure we all do, but let's not there get are distracted. There papers being written now, all the time about how th the This is why I disagree with like discussing you. our own Honestly, experiences. Though, if you've been through all this, you have to admit Mrs Titchener's story might be true. Yeah, all right. Maybe it is. Wait, 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 no. What are you saying? Maybe he did do all those things. Oh, for God's sake, can't you see what she's trying to do? It doesn't matter. Absolutely. It no, does. it doesn't. Even if we follow the judge's instructions, the other part of self-defence is using reasonable force. Mm. And there's no way on earth you're going to convince me the force she used was that. Mm. Yes, yes. Thank you. Good point. How can any of us honestly believe what she did was reasonable? No, the question is whether what she did was reasonable based on what she oh, believed. For heaven's sake. I'm only repeating what the judge You're said. You're spitting hairs. And the judge also said it's up to us to decide. That is true, I suppose. There must have been other ways she could have stopped it. Hang on, are you saying you've changed your mind again? No, I'm not sure. It just hadn't occurred to me. Typical. Well, I thought her fancy lawyer made it sound pretty reasonable. Her husband put the knife in her hand, he told her to kill herself. Oh, come on. How was she meant to know? What did he do next? Oh, don't be so gullible. Does he look like the type of man who'd do something like that? Why? What does a man like that look like? Well, not like him. You mean not well-spoken and middle class? No, I, I don't... Not someone no. like you. Excuse me. Uh, what exactly are you insinuating? I'm not insinuating anything. You're the one who was justifying violence against women. How dare you? All I was saying was that there seems to be some unwritten rule that women are always the victim. We don't get excuses made for us when we reach the end of our tether. Mm. We heard what both those women put him through. Oh, who's being gullible now? No, it's a fair point. You didn't actually buy what he said about being a magnet for strange women. Why not? Maybe you don't know a lot about the opposite sex, but until you've been married, you wouldn't understand. That's right. We've all pinned our hopes on someone, only to find out, too late down the line, that they're an absolute 
bloody nightmare. The scales have swung too far the other way. Maybe he thought he could fix them. These days it's all about the benefit of the doubt. Well, maybe he deliberately targeted them. Why is that, Dennis? Because women actually have rights. Now. Oh, please. I grew Why up in the 50s and 60s. I mean, the pair of them are out of their minds. Like. And that's when the guy in the public gallery said it. The Poor guy. The one that's when this country we were dragged to back out. He reckoned they were compulsive lies. Wait, no, 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 no. no. You can't no. use that as what evidence. That is against the it was all just swept under the car. What rubbish! He knew what he was talking about. We used to have standards. It's people like you who ruined this country. Give it away, the other way round, Dismissing all the working people. Don't really share, but it's values. Stop it! Now. Stop it, all of you! That's enough! Yeah, everyone chill. You too, Blake. What are we doing? Why are we arguing? We all sat in the same courtroom, didn't we? We all heard the same evidence. So how can we see things so differently? I know everyone's tired, but we all seem so full up with anger and suspicion and resentment. It's like we're forgetting why we're here. None of us chose to do this. We all got sent the same letter and we're never going to sort out this mess unless we put our personal feelings to one side and start listening to each other. Fine, whatever, love. I'll vote for anything that gets me out of here faster. In that case, may I remind us all one last time of this one simple question. Are we convinced the defendant didn't believe her son to be under such serious threat that she had to stab her husband to protect him. Uh, uh, Jackie, if you don't mind, I believe I'm still the foreman. Never mind about that uh, now. No, but... Yeah, no, really, what does it matter? Let's just get on. Oh, hang on. Jackie, you were saying? In my view, we've heard more than enough, not just during the courtroom, but around this table, to convince me that may have been what she believed. I'm sure Tristan's friend didn't think her boyfriend was a monster when she first met him. No, not at all. Lisa, I'm sure you didn't think that about your partner. I wouldn't have touched him with a barge pole if I did. Oh, so now it's a crime to be a nice guy. No, not if that's what you really are. No. But with some men, it's an act. They hide their true intentions and instead they manipulate and they coerce. This is pure speculation. Both the defendant and Miss Myers say Mr Titchener was very charming to begin with and then as time passed, he started chipping away. He belittled them. He played mind games. Both times, he isolated them from their family. They were in America. He wouldn't allow them to work. He wouldn't allow them to drive. Only because she crashed the car. He didn't even like them having a say over if and when they had children. I have plenty more examples written down. It reads like a modus operandi. What, what do you expect when you take a load of small, unrelated events and you lump them all together? But isn't that how he does it? Lots of tiny incidents that don't seem like much in themselves, but accumulate and accumulate. That's exactly what happened to my friend. Oh, come on. No one else is being fooled by this, are they? All Robert Titchener ever did was try to take care of his family. He took on her sprog. He took on her job. He took away every last thing that gave her a sense of identity. And then when she's about to escape, he puts a knife in her hand and dares her to kill herself. The man who for two years had told her he loved her. After all that, how could she possibly know what else he might be capable of? What he was capable of? The woman's sick. She was crazy. She was trying to run away with his child. I expect she was ill, but as Holly said, you can look at the same evidence and see two different things. That's what Mrs Titchener did. When she looked at her husband, he convinced her she was the problem. But it's men like him who are the problem. And until we start to recognise them when they're sat right in front of us, this will just carry on. Well, there it is. That's the real agenda. You just want to blame him because he's a man. And why are you so desperate to blame her? Because I know how he feels. I haven't seen my two boys for almost six months. I'm not allowed to go within 500 metres of my own home, the house that I'm paying for, because of the lies my tramp of an ex-wife told about me in court. These women are all the same. Look, oh, OK, OK, even if you don't think she meant to kill him, she's still guilty of wounding with intent. Now, come on, they can't have it both ways. They can't demand to be treated equally and then still play the victim. As the person you elected to be your foreman, I'm telling you, don't get taken in. Helen Titchener brought this on herself. She... Well, she needs to be punished. Oh, for pity's sake, how many more times... Go away. Who was that? Jennifer? No, no, Shula. Oh, maybe I should call her back. I'll have to tell you, don't. Save your battery. 
It's quarter to five. They were sending us home soon anyway. What can be taking so long? They've been given the majority direction. Obviously more than one of the jurors can't agree. On what? Weren't they watching? Did they sit through the same trial? Tony, please. Are they seriously going to swan off to enjoy a couple of days with their families while we're left stuck in limbo, yes, okay. waiting for this torture to start all over again? All right. Helen but, but doesn't look, get to go home for the weekend, does she? One of the prosecution team's talking to Bruce and Ursula. What? Oh, right then. Tony, what are you doing? I don't care about them. No, but you can't... I'm going to find out what's happening. Tony, wait! There you are. I thought I'd find you next to the courtroom. Anna. Oh, it was a little too public. Tom said he'd fetch us. What's going on? This is it. The jury's ready to return its verdict. What? No. But we thought... Well, they're coming back in. Now, don't read anything into their facial expressions. I've been doing this long enough to know it doesn't mean anything. Just try to stay calm. Even if it goes the wrong way, there's still a chance we can appeal. Why? Do you think it might? I, I hope not. That's all I can say. I've made mistakes in the past being overly confident. We just have to keep faith that justice is possible. You'd better go. The judge won't want to waste any time now that they're ready. Will the defendant stand? Will the foreman please stand? Mr Foreman, please answer my first question, either yes or no. Have the jury reached verdicts upon which at least ten of you are agreed? Yes. On count one, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty of attempted murder? Not guilty. <laughs> On count two, the alternative charge of wounding with intent, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. <laughs> Tony, I don't understand. They believed her, Pat. Our beautiful, courageous little girl. She's coming home. Oh, no. Silence, please. Mr. Gorham. Mr. Gorham. Of course. Um, my apologies, Your Honour. May the defendant be discharged. <laughs> yes. Oh. Mrs. Titchener, the jury have found you not guilty on both charges you faced. You may be discharged. <laughs> so, what happens now? Let's go with the officers to complete the formalities downstairs. Helen? Helen, wait! D tell me, where are they taking oh, her? I'm not sure. I suppose there must be a process. She needs to collect Jack. Of course, Jack. Come on. Oh, so, so is there, is there somewhere we have to meet? Then? We'll find out. Let's just get out of here. None of us ever have to see the inside of this damn courtroom again. Usually it takes half an hour or so to go through the admin. I'm sure they won't be much longer. No, OK. J just so long as we're waiting in the right place. What's another few minutes? <laughs> Thank you, Anna. There simply aren't words to tell you how grateful we are. Oh, not at all. I'm just grateful you trusted me. It would have been my fault if Helen had been convicted. We knew she was innocent. Yes, but still... I just wish there could have been some other way so you didn't have to be put through this. All these months of not being able to see Helen, knowing you'd have to give evidence against her. The law's designed the way it is for good reasons, but it's not always humane. No. Well, I just hope she can forgive me. Oh, Pat, believe me, you don't need to worry about that. Well, why don't I give you a call later, but... We don't want to overwhelm her... Yeah, OK. OK, Mum, love you too. They're all celebrating over at Home Farm. Brian's already broken out the champagne. Oh, you surprised me. Uh, have Tom and Johnny gone to bring the cars round? Yes, although there's still loads of press outside. Oh, well, you don't need to say anything if you don't want to. Dominic's going to make a statement. He'll make sure they tell the right story. Did you see what's happened to Rob and his parents? Scarpered, probably with their tails between their legs. I expect so. Although I genuinely thought Rob might hurt someone. The way he was berating his barrister. Oh, Tony, Pat, here they come now. I'll give you some privacy. Helen. Oh, my goodness. Helen, darling. Hi, Dad. How, how are you? It, me? I, I, I'm good. I'm fantastic. I, I've never been better. 
Say hello to Grandad, Jack. Oh, hello, little man. Oh, you get bigger every time I see you. Oh, bless. Mum. Yes, love? I, I didn't get a chance to introduce you when you saw him. <laughs> Jack, this is Granny. Do you remember? Oh, never mind if you don't. This is a fresh start for all of us. Oh, Helen. Would you like to hold him? I'd love to. There you go. Hello. Sweetheart. Come here. Dad. I just want you to know if I could have swapped places and sat in that dock for you. You were, Dad. Every minute. <laughs> Dad, please don't cry. I'm so sorry. Oh, what are you sorry for? I've never been more proud. If anyone should be sorry, it's me. I've kept picturing you being put in the back of that police van. I was so clueless. No, Mum, it wasn't your fault. Let me look at you. You're a survivor. All right. You didn't deserve any of this. Uh, uh, I know. That's what the jury decided. Remember that. I will. I am. Uh, I just really like to get out of here. Oh, of course. <laughs> Tom and Johnny are fetching the cars. In fact, why don't I check if they're here? Uh, yes, and, and Kirsty's around somewhere. She, she's been ringing everyone. Ian, Fallon, Emma. So many people have been thinking of you. That's funny. I wonder where she's gone. But I'll see if I can find her, OK? C can I leave Jack with you? Oh, yes. OK. Congratulations, Helen. You must be chuffed with yourself. Oh, where did you... What? Did you think you could tell all those lies about me and I'd just disappear? Well, you might have fooled everyone else, but we both know they the truth. They weren't lies. You haven't got rid of you me. You know they weren't. And as long as we have a child together, you never will. Sorry, what was that? Nothing to say now you've not got an audience. Well, never mind. I need to get back to Henry. Rob? I'm sorry. I'm sorry it took me so long to realise what you are. But I've had five months in a place where you couldn't hurt me and I'm not going to let you start again now. It isn't just me. The whole world knows what you are now, Rob. You've failed. I'm free. <laughs> Helen, darling. I still can't take my eyes off you. There you are, Jack. It's all right. Mummy's coming back. Did you find Kirsty? Helen, what's wrong? Um, Tom and Johnny have pulled up outside. Sweetheart? No, it's nothing. I guess I'm not used to being surrounded by so many people. Come on, then. Have you everything that you need? Yes, I've got everything. Good. Let's get you home. Home? Bridge Farm. <laughs> yes. It just seems like an awfully long time since I was there. Well, it hasn't changed. There's nothing to be scared of. No, there isn't. It's over. Take me home. There you go, Jack. That's it, good boy. Does he usually go to sleep straight after his feed? Uh, in the morning, yeah. Oh, he looks so peaceful. Hmm. Would you like to do something, Helen? Like what? I don't know. Go for a walk, maybe? Thought you might like to stretch your legs. Oh, no, no, I'm happy here. By the window. Oh, you know, I used to imagine this view every single day. I bet. I don't think I've ever seen the farm looking so beautiful. I... Thought you could do with a spot of tea and toast, love. Oh, I'm not hungry, Mum. Oh. I'll eat it, Pat. <laughs> OK, good. I did have breakfast. I know. I, uh, I suppose I 
just want to feed you up. Oh, look. Johnny's moving the cattle by himself. Yeah, he's become quite the expert on beef. And he's been a real help to Tom. That's nice to hear. John would be proud. Hmm. <laughs> this little one seems to be spark out. Yeah, he looks really peaceful, doesn't he? What time does Henry arrive? Half past. Are they usually on time? Pretty much. You, you'll probably see him get out of the car. Yeah, that's what I thought. I don't want to miss a single moment of him. You won't, Helen. I can't believe I'm really here, in this room. I'm going to be able to hear his voice and hold him. You've got the whole day together to look forward to. What? What's he said about me? Oh, he, he's missed you, of course. I wonder what's been going through his mind. Well, he certainly seems happy enough. Do you think he'll be OK? Uh, with me, I mean. It's been such a long time. Henry loves you, Helen. Same as he always has. Try to take it easy, though. Perhaps it's best not to expect too much from this first meeting. Yes. Yes, you're right. I won't. You haven't been home long. Take it gently. Yeah. Hey. How is everyone? I'm fine. Do you fancy a cup of tea, Tom? Oh, I haven't got time. There's stuff I need to do in the polytunnel. Then I promised Dad I'd do a stock take. Do you want a hand? Oh, no, no. I can manage. You stay with Helen. <laughs> I don't need guarding anymore, Tom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know. I just thought you might want company. I'm waiting for Henry. You carry on, Kirsty. OK. Come on, then. Let's go. Thanks. Oh. Oh, we're disturbing you, aren't we, sweetheart? Shall I take him upstairs? It'll be quiet. No, I'd rather keep him here, Mum, where I can see him. Of course. Oh, look at him. <laughs> he must be dreaming. Mm, he knows. What? Jack's about to meet his brother. Husband's cruel jibes led to stabbing horror. Robert, I asked if you wanted a coffee. No, Mother. Here's another one. Serial abuser posed as Mr. Nice Guy. How can they live with themselves inventing this nonsense? Oh, do close that thing down, Robert. It's not helping. My entire character has been reduced to a, a salacious headline. These hacks have no idea. Don't upset yourself, please. Why shouldn't I be upset? Helen's one. Made the world believe her lies. Oh, I know it's difficult for you. She's got my son. My flesh and blood. And now she's going to take Henry. We don't know that for sure. Not yet. How could they all take her side? I mean, after everything she did, all the suffering she put me through, and now my reputation, my good name, is being dragged through the mud. <laughs> this is more like it. Sperm donor mother admits frenzied attack. Uh, <laughs> yeah, listen to this. Cheesemaker Helen Titchener worked at E. coli farm. Well, at least someone's done their research. Um, we should think about making a move soon with Henry. She got away with it. I know. I'm so sorry. And now they're all together, the three of them. Who have I got? Well, there's me. <laughs> and your father. Oh. No, no, soon you'll put this dreadful situation behind you and start afresh. How can I possibly start afresh without my boys? Oh, Robert, there's still a chance you'll get them back if you make a decent case at the family court hearing. Who knows what might happen? Uh, are you sure I can't catch you anything, Mum, Mom, please, will you stop asking? I know you mean well, but... I'm sorry. <sighs> no, there's no need to apologise. Look, I didn't mean to snap. Doesn't matter, Helen. You know, I longed for you to come back so badly. Now you're here, I, I feel like I keep saying the wrong thing. As if I don't know how to be. Kaz says it takes time. When I spoke to her yesterday, she says... People have to find a new way of being together. She's very wise for someone so young. 
Yes, she is. I was thinking you might want to talk to, to someone about everything. <gasps> oh, Mummy's here. So he is. He's taking his seatbelt off by himself and opening the car door. Look, are we so grown up? Henry. I, I, I'll come with you, shall I, darling? No, no, no. It's probably better if you go. He, he's used to... Please, Mum, do you mind? Of course not. Remember, Daddy loves you. And I love you, Daddy. Oh. I'll come and collect you later on this afternoon. Hmm? Hello, Henry. Hello, Granny. Rob? Pat. Um, look, I know, I know you'll probably say no, but could I po possibly see the baby? I'm afraid that's out of the question. I'll stand here. I mean, I, I won't come inside. If you could just bring him to the door so I can see his face. Come along, Henry, love. Goodbye. <laughs> it's all right, darling. That's a good boy. Shh. Helen, look who it is. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, Henry, let me see you. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. <laughs> it's okay, Henry. Go to Mummy. Oh, I've missed you so much. Oh. Never mind. You can hug Mummy later. Why are you crying? Oh, I'm... Um, I suppose I'm just so happy to see you. You look different. Your hair is like a boy. Lots of girls have short hair, Henry. <laughs> well, you look just wonderful. Oh, and, um, this. Come on, this is your little brother. I know, Gideon. Uh, um, no, 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 that's a nickname Rob uses. His real name's Jack. Jack! That's right. And he's been looking forward to meeting his big brother. How's it going? Not bad. You've had a bumper crop of tomatoes. Yeah. Well, you've done loads. Have I? It's a big help. Thanks. I'm glad that I can be of some use. Hey. You, you OK? Yeah. Yeah, I am. It's not easy, is it? Oh, I just wish... I wish I could make it better for her. I'd like to tear Rob apart. So would I. That's not going to change anything for Helen. She's still got to get through the family court hearing this week. Rob will have another go at destroying her, I'm sure he will. He won't win, Kirsty. He can't. Uh, look, Mum says lunch is nearly ready. Oh, time I made a move. No, stay. I'm sure Helen would like that. Oh, Robert, talk to me. I was a few metres away from him. I heard him crying. Oh, you mustn't torture yourself. I asked Pat if I could see him. I pleaded with her. What did she say? She stared at me and then she shut the door. And that was it? Yes. Oh. What kind of woman does that? She looked at me like I was nothing. Whatever they think of me, I'm the child's father. They're a heartless lot, rotten to the core. Pat's the worst. Carrying on as if she's the only grandmother. I keep imagining what he looks like. I'm, I'm so sorry. If only I could see him. Well, but today was the first day. It was bound to be difficult. Mm, yeah, I suppose. I mean, things will sort themselves out soon enough. They have to. It's the court's responsibility to make a fair judgment. And after the hell you've endured, Robert, you deserve to have those boys by your side. Yeah, you're right. Whatever the archers think, little Gideon will always be a Titchener. Why aren't you playing with me, Mummy? 
Uh, of course. Uh, why don't you go and get a board game, and then I can carry on giving Jack his milk. Snakes and ladders. <laughs> Great idea. Do you know where to find it, Henry? Yes, Daddy always wins. But this time I'm going to beat you. <laughs> Won't he come to get me? In a little while. I can't wait to tell Daddy about Jack. Try not to run! You're right, love. Yes. Oh, Helen. He's still your boy. I used to love it when he called Rob Daddy. Now oh, it makes me feel sick. I guess I only have myself to blame. Don't say things like that, please. He fooled everybody, including me and your father. He was too clever for us. Henry and Jack need me to be strong. Kaz says it's the children that keep us going and we need to keep going for them. I have to clear my mind, get focused and prepare myself for the hearing. You were found not guilty. The judge is bound to grant you custody of both the boys, surely. I'm not taking anything for granted, Mum. The fact is, I won't feel truly free until Henry's back with me for good. Shall I make you a coffee before you go? No, thanks. I was <clears throat> uh, looking at a couple of hotels online. I was thinking perhaps a break might do us good. Yeah? Are you not going to be busy harvesting the maize? I won't be ready for a couple of weeks. Anyway, Brian's got Ed to rely on, so it's not impossible. Yeah, I have to get to work. Please, please wait. No, my shift's about to start. I don't want to let my team down. Ian, I am sorry. The only thing I'm sorry about is that I allowed Rob to damage my friendship with Helen. What matters to me now is that I support her. Well, me too, but we still She's fighting to... for her children this week, in case you've forgotten. Of course I haven't. Look, I'm not talking about the court case. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, Adam. Bye. Ian! The agent sent some more photos. Hmm? Oh, take a look at these views, Oliver. Oh, they're glorious. Huh? <laughs> Imagine sitting on that balcony with a glass of Chianti. Oh, yeah, it's quite magnificent. I wonder what the neighbours are like. We've been very lucky with our community here in Ambridge. <sighs> you could try and sound enthusiastic, Oliver. I am. But I can't help thinking of Joe. What he said the other week, you know, leaving Grange Farm. Well, it's going to break his heart. Oh, it's very nice of you, darling, but if we want to buy in Tuscany, we're going to have to sell up. I wish the Grundys could buy the place and stay on, but they're in no position to do so. He's 95, Caroline. <sighs> he thought he'd finally found peace, the place where he was going to end his days. We've pulled the rug from under his feet. No, that's not our fault, not our responsibility. Well... We've got a chance here, Oliver. We've got to take it. Hmm. Just stop worrying about Joe Grundy and start thinking about our future. You all right, Dad? I don't know nothing no more. Uh, Clary said our William might uh, pop in to see you, cheer you up. No, uh, thanks. Did I tell you uh, I saw him the other night in the bull? No, I don't remember. Barely spoke to him. No, when the boy's angry, he'll come round. Oh, I'm not so sure. Still got a right bee in his bonnet about me and the poaching. Just hope I haven't given him cause to have second thoughts. About what? Moving into number one, the green. We're all relying on him, ain't we? Oh, I ain't bothered. Yeah, then stop packing up, will you? It ain't good for me soul. I'm under strict orders from Clary to fill this box with cups and saucers. I don't want to see it or hear it. We've no choice, Dad. Oliver and Caroline want us out of here and that's that. Why don't you take Bartleby out? I told Oliver Sterling, my roots is here. It ain't right to chop down a grand old tree. It just ain't right. Uh, Jim said he'll be round later. Uh, take you up to the pub if you fancy. Oh, well, tell him I don't want to see nobody. All right, Grandad. Uh, how are you keeping, William? Fine. Uh, just so you know, uh, George didn't go to school today. He's got a temperature. Yeah, yeah, I know. Emma called me this morning. Right. Well, I uh, best be off. Uh, 
Uh, I said I'd help uh, Kenton clear the garden at the ball. I won't be long. Right then, Grandad. What's this I hear about you feeling down in the dumps? Oh, it's worse than that, William. Oh, come on. This isn't like you. No, this is the end. I can feel it. How's the kedgery? Mm, delicious. Excellent haddock. And your souffle? Mm, perfect. More wine? <laughs> oh, um, you've twisted my arm. <laughs> Remember, though, you've got to keep an eye on the time. Mm. Don't remind me. What's this uh, conference call about again? Cropping plans. <laughs> well, rather you than me, darling. Mm, I can think of less dreary ways of spending an afternoon. I uh, suppose things will be easier once your new estates manager starts. No, we'll see. Although... Rob Titchener may not be the man you thought he was after uh, what came out at the trial. I certainly intend to mull things over. I'll probably call him later in the week. Hello, you two. Oh, oh. hi there. How's your meal? Oh, most enjoyable, as always. Good. <laughs> I, um, I had a peek at the link you sent me, Caroline. The villa looks splendid. Oh, yes, we're delighted with it. So, Tuscany beckons. <sighs> yes. Even with all the uncertainty, we've decided to go ahead. Great art, stunning landscapes, fabulous wine. I am very jealous, darling. We're looking forward to having somewhere we can slip off to whenever we feel like it. Aren't we, Oliver? Um, oh, absolutely. And, um, do you have a buyer for Grange Farm yet? Not at the moment. I saw Eddie in the shop the other day. He said the Grundys have already started packing. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, we should be sad to see them go. It's hit Joe quite hard. Well, moving's never easy. Mm, I heard the same thing. Eddie said Joe won't even leave the house at the moment. Oh, no. Uh, you must be thrilled that Helen's back home, Lillian. Oh, absolutely. It's a massive relief for Pat and Tony. Well, for all of us, of course. I was shocked to hear what came out about Rob in court. I always found him to be such an upstanding chap. Remember, Lillian, when he stood up to that awful sab? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, and, and he and Helen seem so happy at the opening meet. Well, one never knows what goes on in a relationship. Quite. Poor Ian must be reeling after those revelations in court about Adam's roving eye. Oh, I do feel for him. Well, for them both. It's horrible when these things become public. Yeah, it's safe to say over the easier weeks. Oh, Ian. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. You're not the first to talk behind me back, Lillian, and you won't be the last. I'm so sorry. I just hope that scum Rob will leave the village so Helen can get on with her life in peace. Well, I hope you're planning to go to school tomorrow, George. I can't if I'm ill. Well, if you're well enough to play that thing, you're well enough to go to lessons. Can I get you a cup of tea before I go, Grandad? Yeah, not for me, William. No, I know it's hard. But it's not as if you'll be on the streets. I'll make sure the house is shipshape. It'll feel like home in no time. This is my home, and this is where I'm staying. <sighs> well, I'd better get to work. What are you doing today, Dad? Oh, checking the birds. Season starts in a couple of weeks. I don't want to be caught out. I wish I could come with you. Will you stay right here and rest? It was so much fun when Grandpa took me. What? We went foraging a few weeks ago. He gave the pheasants whiskey. He took you with him? Yeah, it was brilliant. How could he be so stupid? Oh, I should have known. No, 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 then, William, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Right. Well, he's not getting away with this. Yeah, calm down, William. Very good to see you both. It's always a pleasure. Well, Grey Gables is a godsend, the perfect place for a business meeting. That's what we always say, isn't it, Justin? Oh, yes. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. I, um, I do hope Ian's all right. Me and my big mouth. He seems to be throwing himself into his work. Well, there's a strategy that never fails. Oh, Lillian, um, are you planning to take part in this year's Flower and Produce show? Naturally. I'm entering my gentleman's buttonhole. <laughs> good for you. It is quite something. <laughs> Jenny's in a monumental tish. She's worried that her blackcurrant jam is going to be usurped by Jill's. <laughs> <laughs> now, that will be a difficult one to call. Yeah. <laughs> See you soon. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye, darling. Bye-bye. Oh, that's a shame. What is that? A state agent. Hmm? No further interest in Grange Farm. 
I emailed this morning. Oliver, we need to consider dropping the price still further. Uh, I don't know. I... I've been wondering, Caroline, perhaps selling up is the wrong move. Of course it's not. Besides, we've no option if we're going to secure Tuscany. Oh, really, Oliver, it's not as if the Grundys are going to be homeless. Well, if it was just Eddie and Clary, I wouldn't hesitate. But Joe's nearing the end of his life. One of the move ruins his health, and you know as well as I do it sent him over the edge when they were evicted from Grange Farm years ago. He's a much, much older man now. You're really letting him get to you, aren't you? I'm genuinely worried about him, Caroline. Please don't say you're having second thoughts about Tuscany. Of course not, darling, but there must be some way we can work this out. I thought you were supposed to be working. I were finished. Uh, Kenton's offered me a free lunch. Have you ever done an honest day's work in your life? Of course I have. Here, yeah, come on, let me buy you a drink. I'm not drinking with you. William, look, I tried to apologise about the poaching. Yeah, foraging, you call it. George says. Oh. Hmm. Oh, dear. When were you going to tell me you took my son on your nasty little mission? Oh, I didn't mean no harm. I was just teaching him about the old ways. Teaching him? <laughs> That's a joke. No, I was showing him that the birds aren't just for the local gentry, that we should have our fair share as well. It's criminal. That's what it is. What sort of example is that for George? Look, you have my word, it won't happen again. Damn right it won't. And next time you go poaching on estate land, don't think I'm covering Look, for William, you. William, I understand you're angry with me. <laughs> Please don't hold it against the rest of the family. What are you on about? The house. What? Well, no matter what I've done, I, I hope you'll still let us move into the house. Is that honestly what you think of me? That I make my own family homeless? Out of spite? But William, I, I didn't you mean You really that. don't know me at all, do you? Look, I'm sorry, son. I just thought... God, it must be the stress of the move. I'm at sixes and sevens. I'm worried to death about oh, Dad. I'm not listening to this. William! William! How was your day? Fine. Why don't we have dinner out tonight? Any way you like. My treat. I'd rather not. Ian... You go I... on your own. Well, let's just stay in, shall we? No, no, you go out there. You have a listen to what people are saying about us, about your roving eye. At least that was Lillian's description. Oh, no. I've got a thick skin, Adam, but other people's pity is my limit. I'm sorry. Yeah, so you keep saying. And I've said nothing happened between Charlie and me, not really. Oh, please. No more lies. It was a daft flirtation. I'm not even sure if Charlie's gay. But, but, but what difference does that make? I knew something was wrong from the very beginning. The same with Pavel. I should have trusted me, God. It was wrong. I know. But it was all meaningless. I got carried away in the moment. It carried away? This only came out because of what Helen and Mum said to Rob, because of Rob's vitriol. Oh, 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 this... Rob is not the problem in this relationship. You've broken my trust, Adam. Yeah. Oh, this is too pathetic. I can't deal with it right now. What do you mean? Look, stop thinking of yourself for a second. I'm trying to Rob think Rob damaged up... everything he touched, but Helen suffered more than you and I can imagine. She's the one who's going to have to live with the consequences for the rest of her life, and if she doesn't get the children this week, I don't know how she'll cope. Yes! Josh, mind the table, please. Pass me those cups, would you? 250 quid. What on earth have you spent 250 pounds on? Hmm? Oh, nothing. That's not far off what you pay in the shop. I'm selling to a buyer who got a bit carried away. And what exactly have you sold? Oh, no. Well, what's happened now? My phone died and I need to email the buyer. Have you seen my charger, Mum? Not recently. Look, before you wander off, Josh, I'd like to know... What... Yesterday, um, I'm pretty sure Pip asked to borrow it. Hang on a minute. See you later. Oh. Where's your dad got to? I'm sure he won't be long. Uh, you might want to look away, love. What do you mean? He's just arrived with that awful woman. Why should I look away? Well, you're bound to be anxious. I'd have thought you want to be in the best frame of mind. Mum, but... I couldn't care less about Rob or Ursula. I've beaten him once and now I've seen Henry. There's everything to fight for. Oh. I'm not letting him bully me anymore. Right. 
Yes, absolutely. I have to put my own feelings to one side and be practical. Hello there. Hi, Anna. Hi. Morning, Pat. How are you feeling, Helen? Not too bad, thanks. Well, you look very refreshed. Well, we got the right result. And in my experience, achieving justice is an excellent tonic. <laughs> Seems so. I thought it might be useful to go over the main points that are going to be covered today. OK. The question that this hearing considers is what is in the children's best interests and therefore whether either you or Rob pose a risk of harm to them. Mm. I'll argue that Rob does mm. because of his history of coercive control, emphasising the fact that even a jury agreed you tried to defend Henry against him. Oh, okay. What might the other side say? Well, no doubt Rob's solicitor will try and assert that Helen is unstable and an unfit mother. Well, even... Though the verdict was not guilty. Well, unfortunately, Rob is probably arrogant enough to believe he can convince the family court, hmm. even though he's failed to convince a jury. <laughs> but that's simply not fair. It's almost as if Helen has to clear her name twice over. It's the process, Mum. I'm afraid so. Although, in reality, the verdict means Rob doesn't stand much of a chance of winning anyone over. Mm. The social worker's report supports Helen's case. <gasps> Plus, there's the statement from Jess. Not to mention the fact that we'll be in front of the same judge as last week. Oh. Judge Loomis? Yes. <gasps> He's listed for Children's Act hearings this week. Well, that must be a good omen. We'll see. When do you think we'll get a judgment? I'm hoping Friday. Okay. Right. It's nearly time. Are you ready, Helen? Yes, I am. Let's go. Pip! Pip, you've got my charger. Oh. What are you doing? Oh, my God! Um, there's a tea towel behind you if you need to cover yourself up. Right, yes. Um, what are you doing here? I'm uh, having toast and marmalade. Do, do, do you want a slice? Uh, no. You really should have knocked. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe lock the door in future. Especially if you're walking around with no clothes on. Uh, yes, yeah, I, I will. Oh, now I understand why Pip's helping you with the gosling. Oh, don't be stupid. Look, what is it you want? I was looking for this. As you'll find out, my sister's a terrible one for borrowing stuff and not returning it. I'll uh, bear that in mind. So, does this mean you two are an item? That's our business. What's the big secret? No secret. We're both just extremely private people. Oh, calm down, Toby. I'm not from TMZ. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Mr South, Your Honour, our case proposes that it is the first respondent, Helen Titchener, who presents a risk of emotional and psychological harm to the children. Her erratic care and attitude towards them raises the distinct possibility of future neglect. Let us not forget that Henry witnessed her stabbing Mr Titchener and her actions caused Baby Jack to begin his life in a prison mother and baby unit. A jury may have found her not guilty of attempted murder and wounding with intent, but I would remind Your Honour that the burden of proof in these proceedings is on the balance of probabilities, rather than beyond reasonable doubt, as in criminal proceedings. Mr South, you are of course aware that I heard the criminal proceedings last week, and the evidence seemed very clear to me. Your client may be in some difficulty if he wishes to reopen that wound. Okay. Your Honour, we believe that Helen Titchener is volatile, unpredictable and unreliable. And the sooner both children are taken from her care and placed into the care of their father, the better. Henry's case is unusual because he was conceived by a sperm donor. But the truth remains, Mr Robert Titchener is the only father this vulnerable young boy has ever known. Mrs Archer, could you tell me about the relationship you and your husband have with Henry, your grandson? We're very close. Before she met Rob, Helen and Henry lived with us at our home. Which is Bridge Farm? That's right. How involved have you been in Henry's upbringing? We've been there every step of the way. Watched him change from a baby into a toddler and now a young boy. We used to see him every day. Used to? Everything changed when Helen met Rob... We saw Henry much less, and after she became pregnant, hardly at all. Tell me a bit about life when Helen and Henry were at Bridge Farm. We were a normal, happy family, I suppose. Henry's grown up on the farm, so he's very familiar with our daily routines. and He, he loves to join in. He often picks vegetables from our polytunnel with Tony. That's my husband. And what kind of mother is Helen? Oh, she's absolutely devoted to Henry. 
Especially because of the way he was conceived. By sperm donor? Yes. Helen took the conscious decision to become a parent, so Henry's always been the centre of her world. She's made him feel incredibly loved and secure. Oh, and she was always keen to surround Henry with decent male role models. As well as Tony, there's Tom, her brother. He's been a doting uncle. That means she's always put Henry first. So life was good? Until she met Rob, yes. Thank you, Mrs Archer. That's all, Your Honour. Mr South? <clears throat> Mrs Archer, do you recall an incident in November 2014 when your husband was attacked by a bull at Bridge Farm? Well, yes, it was a dreadful time. Is it true that he was protecting Henry? Tony was very brave. And there was subsequent investigation conducted by the Health and Safety Executive looking into why Henry had been exposed to danger? There was an investigation, but the inspector concluded that nobody was at fault. It was simply a horrendous accident. And where was your daughter while Henry was being exposed to this horrendous danger? She was going to the hairdressers with my I see. Toby? Oh, hello, Ruth. Where are you off to? Uh, to check the cows. Oh, I'm just, uh... Hey, Toby, you made it. Uh, now we can go ahead with the meeting. Yes. Yeah, g good to uh, see you. I thought you might be busy. No, I'm here. Wouldn't have missed it for the world. What are you meeting about? Upper class eggs, of course. You never said. I don't tell you everything, Mum. No. You still haven't come clean about what you sold on that auction. Oh, nothing for you to worry about. We'll talk about it later. Josh! Come on, Toby. Mrs. Titchener, have you ever suffered from mental health problems? I had an eating disorder when I was younger, after my brother John died. It was a difficult time for all of us. Didn't you visit a psychiatrist a few months ago, in March of this year? Rob made me go. He made you? He convinced me that I was losing my mind. He made me feel unsettled, confused... But I don't feel like that anymore. Is it not true that you were diagnosed with depression? Mild depression. I was feeling low, but only because of what Rob was doing. He was extremely controlling. According to Mr Titchener, he was concerned about you, especially after witnessing certain erratic behaviour. There was no erratic behaviour. Did you or did you not on one occasion place your son Henry in a bath of scalding hot water? Rob made me think that was my fault, but it wasn't. I'm absolutely sure of it. How can you be so sure? I would never have harmed Henry in any way. I checked the water that evening. I, I know I did. Rob managed every minute detail of our lives, so I know it was Rob. It was always Rob. Whatever you think, whatever anyone thinks, I'm not mad. Are you telling me you've actually sold your brand new laptop? I've only used it a few times. It was an investment for your future from me and your dad. It wasn't yours to sell. Well, that's a matter of opinion. I mean, you did give it to me, so I technically own it. Did you not think to at least ask us? Uh, no. Honestly, Josh, you really are out of line. Why do you need £250 anyway? Capital. For my business ventures. Ventures. Oh, don't worry about it, Mum. Josh! Look, if I invest this cash in the right place, which I will do, I'll be able to buy everyone in the family a new laptop, including you. Don't answer that, please. It might be important. Does your father know you've sold the laptop? Oh, that was Toby. I hope there's not been an emergency. Stop changing the subject. I'm not. I'm just... I mean, what if it was about Pip? Pip? Something might have happened to her. Why would Toby call you about Pip? They've become quite close. How do you mean? So close that they're, well, together. Seems pretty serious if you ask me. That was tough. We answered the questions truthfully. That's all we could have done. The way they try and twist words, twist the truth, it's infuriating. You did really well, Mum. Oh, so did you, darling. We just have to get on with it. 
Anna did say this is unlikely to be a clean fight. I suppose it is Rob we're dealing with. Not to mention the dreaded Ursula. Who knows what stories they've concocted together. Poor Henry. Stuck in the cottage with them both. Stuck in the middle of this nightmare. I could tell on Sunday that Rob's been poisoning his mind. Well, at least there'll be a decision in the next couple of days. Then you and the boys can move on properly. The damage is done, though, isn't it? To Henry, I mean. He's had to spend the last few months with Rob. I don't care about me, but I'll, I'll never forgive myself for what I've put him through. None of this is your fault, Helen. You must realise that. I know my son. And I can tell how much this has affected him. I mean, how am I ever going to put him back together? You will love. We all will. We'll work hard as a family, do whatever it takes. Yes. Remember, Helen, what Kaz said. You have to be at your strongest now for the sake of the boys. Whatever hold Rob thinks he's got on Henry, it can't last. Henry's heart's mine. I know it is. So, uh, how long have you and Toby been seeing each other? Does it matter? Just asking. I suppose it started after Matthew. But of course, after Matthew. Why didn't you mention anything? Well, I didn't think it was important. Has Toby told anyone? Uh, no. I don't know. Not even Rex. No, honestly, Mum, why don't you ask him yourself? Is there any coffee going? I've just made a fresh pot. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd better go. Oh, uh, Pip, I wonder if you could have a look at the grass and herb mixture in the paddock sometime. That's exactly where I'm headed, Dad. Bye, Pip. What's with the sulky teenager act? Oh, I suppose you'll find out sooner or later. She's... Uh, got a new boyfriend. Oh, what, and they've already had a tiff? That's hardly a good sign. It's... Toby. Toby who? Toby Fairbrother. What? You're... You're joking. That was my reaction to... Seriously? I'm afraid so. Oh! But how... She what? said it started off as a fling and then... No, 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 no. spare me the details, Ruth. Toby? I can't get my head round this. Surely Pip knows better than to involve herself with that idiot. She got very defensive when I asked her about him. <sighs> They've obviously connected on some level. Oh, no, I really thought she had better taste. Mm. Oh, no. Ruth, it's Jude all over again. We can't know that for sure. Well, I don't trust him. Do you? Well... No. I knew it was a mistake bringing those two into Holidry. But Pip was, you know, so persuasive. And now we know why. Well, that's not fair, David. She was going out with Matthew back then. Oh, I suppose. It might not even last that long. Hopefully it'll fizzle out before they get serious. Before that idiot does something stupid, you mean? I should have trusted my instincts and not given them the tenancy in the first place. Well... Perhaps, perhaps there's, there's some clause in the small print which means we can get rid of them. I don't think that's a good idea. People will go mad for starters. And it's not exactly fair on Rex. You have to agree he's a pretty decent bloke. Well, if you say so. Although, I might pop over to Holletree and take a look at the fences. Why? Well, you never know. If they're in poor condition, we might be able to get the Fair Brothers out on dilapidations. David, you're blowing this out of all proportion. Am I? You know as well as I do, Toby Fairbrother is bad news. Oh, come on, Dad. At least drink your tea. I drank some already. Two sips ain't enough. Will you please try to eat something? I said I ain't hungry. Still no luck? <sighs> he hasn't touched his breakfast. Yeah. I can see. We'll make a start on lunch soon, see if that fare is any better. Is George all right for school in the end? Yeah, Edward dropped him off. You look tired, Clary, Lord. Yeah, well, so would you be if you'd been doing morning shifts all week. Oh, where's my slippers? 
sorry, I didn't even hear you leave today. I won't miss these early starts. Pat and Tony are lucky to have you. Well, I could hardly say no, could I? Not with them all at the family court this week. How's it going? She's hoping the social worker's evidence clinches it for Helen, but that's not till tomorrow. Oh, it's a bad business. At least they'll find out before the weekend if Helen's won custody. You hear that, Joe? We think we've got problems. Now, do you fancy a couple of chops for your lunch? Told you, I ain't hungry. Oh, he's turning into a broken record. Joe, I know it's a wrench for you, but we have to face it sooner or later. Well, it might make things easier if I make a start on packing your things. No, 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 please don't. Well, doing something practical might help. I, I want my things to stay here with me. <coughs> oh, uh, hello, Oliver. Eddie, how are things? What does he want? Uh, they've been better, to tell you the truth. Uh, what can I do for you? I wonder whether it might be possible for me to pop in and see you today. Oh, right. Might you be at home later? Oh, I think so. How does midday sound? It should be fine. I look forward to it. See you then. Bye. Bye, Eddie. Don't tell me he's coming round to you. Hello, Pip. What are you doing here, Dad? I thought I'd come and have a look at the fences. How about you? I'm checking the goslings. Rex is away looking after his dad and Toby's sorting out packaging or something for the eggs. Oh. I'm surprised you can spare the time. Haven't you got enough on your plate with your own workload? Well, it'll only take ten minutes. I don't suppose you're charging the Fair Brothers for covering for them? Of course not. <sighs> well, I suppose you have to admire the sheer cheek of it. You've lost me, Dad. Toby Fairbrother. He does seem to have the knack of getting what he wants. Why has everyone got it in for Toby? Come on, Pip. You know the answer to that. He's doing his best. Look, Mum's clearly told you that we're seeing each other. Yep. And that's why you're here. This is still my land. Pip. Look, let me guess. You're inspecting the fences to see if you can find anything wrong with them. And if there is, you can chuck Toby and Rex out. It's in my interest to make sure that Hollow Tree is well maintained. So, well, how do the fences look? All right, I suppose. Yeah, they're in very good shape. And you know why? Tell me. For starters, I put them up. And secondly, the Fair Brothers take care of them. Because they're serious about making the business work. I hope you're right. <sighs> Honestly, look, I'd better go and check the birds. Oh, I hope he doesn't want us out any sooner. Half the house still ain't packed. We'll find out shortly. Come here, me lovely. Hey, careful with the ferrets, Dad. Yeah. There's hot oil on the stove. And at time they two were back outside. They're keeping me company. Leave him be, Clary Lou. Oh, all right, just this once. Suppose Oliver might want to say sorry. Won't make no difference what he says. <laughs> He's got nothing to be sorry about. Oliver and Caroline have done us a big favour letting us stay here. Oh, that'll be him. I'll go. I make sure those two stay away from my chop. Adele won't eat nothing in the road. She feels with me. Oh, here we go again. The oh, Grundy's no. back at the bottom of the ladder. Oh, I never give you no example, son. That's the problem. I'm making lunch if you fancy a bite. Oh, no, not, not for me, thank you, Clary. Good to see you both. All right, Oliver. Joe? Uh, Take a seat, Oliver. Oh, thank you. Put the kettle on, shall I? Oh, that'd be lovely. That's it. Off you go. I've got her, ma'am. Thanks. Right, I think we're all done. Shall we have some lunch? I'm OK, actually. Oh, come on back to the house. Talk to your dad and sort things out. But I don't need to speak to him, Mum. It might help if you explain. There's nothing to explain. He's not even prepared to give Toby a chance. He's only just found out. He feels protective of you, that's all. I'm not a child. I know it's hard for you to understand, but you never stop worrying about your kids. 
I mean, look at what Pat and Tony are going through with Helen. That's hardly the same. I know, but what I mean is, he's being like this because he cares so much. Remember what happened with Jude? Yeah, that was years ago. Really, there's no need for him to be worried. And whether he likes it or not, my relationships are my business. It can't do any harm to at least have a chat with him. Mum, my personal life is not up for discussion. And Dad ought to stop looking for ways to get the Fairbrothers out. He's not doing I that. I saw He's... him checking the fences. They have a two-year contract and he should accept that the Fairbrothers aren't going anywhere. As for me and Toby, we're free to do what we like. As you know, we've had no luck selling Grange Farm. Why do you think that is? Uh, well, it's hard to pinpoint. We've made sure people get a proper look round when they come. Ain't that right, Clary? Oh, yes. Mm. Well, anyway, the, the fact remains we've had a very poor response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy you know, how do you? As you know, we want to sell the place to buy a villa in Tuscany. Oh, a tricky time to be buying in Europe, ain't it? Well, yes, mm. but in spite of the difficulties, we've found one that's perfect. You know, panoramic views, olive groves, plenty of room when guests come to stay. Uh, we're very happy for you and Caroline, Oliver, but uh, what's this got to do with us? Well, Caroline and I have been doing our sums, and we think we may be able to buy the villa by reorganising certain financial arrangements. Anyway, anyway, the long and short of it all is we don't have to sell Grange Farm. What? So we've decided to carry on renting the place to all of you. Did, did, did I just hear you straight? You certainly did. Oh, my giddy aunt. I can't take this in. You, you mean we... We can stay. We can re, really stay. Yes, Joe. But, Oliver, there's no way we can afford the rent on this place. Well, we've got some few figures. Uh, as you'll see, what uh, we'd expect you to pay each month will be well below the market rate. This is... This is, this is, this is, this is it's marvellous. <laughs> well, I was, I was hoping you'd feel like that, Joe. <laughs> oh, my goodness! Oh, somebody oh, catch that! Oh, there he is! Oh, hey, come back oh, here, Hercules. Uh, yeah. Don't oh, something, yeah, Eddie! Right Hercules, oh, Hercules, oh, Hercules! Over here, old chap. Thank you, Oliver. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> here you are, Joe. You take him. Yeah. And keep him safe. Oh, thank you. I, I will, that. <laughs> How much rent are we talking? Well, I, I've written it all down. Uh, here you are. Let me have a look. Oh, it'll still be a stretch. What do you reckon, Clary? Well, yes. But we'll all muck in. You, me, Edward, Emma. We'll make it work somehow. Oh, yeah, well, we will. We yeah. will. I yeah. reckon we will. Well, why don't you take a few days to think about it and let us know early next week? No, 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 no. There's no need for that. You'll, you'll have your rent, Oliver Sterling. This is our home. <laughs> And we're, we're, we're staying. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to tell Edward and Emma. George and Keir will be over the moon. Dad, it's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Is it? <laughs> it's, it's a miracle. That's what it is. It's a miracle. Now we'll really have something to celebrate on Sunday. This is the best birthday present I could have ever hoped for. Oh, I'm so pleased, Joe. We'll have the biggest party Ambridge has ever seen. We most definitely I, will. I'm I, I staying in my house, Eddie. That's right, Dad. I, I'm probably back where I belong. At last. Almost time to go, love. Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. How are you feeling? Oh, OK. A bit anxious. I've had lots of calls and texts from people wishing you good luck. Oh, and, and Clary says they're all thinking of you. Oh, that's nice to know. How's everyone doing? Yeah, I'm just about ready. So, this is it. Oh, don't, Tony. I'm already a nervous wreck. Well, stop it, Pat. As far as I'm concerned, our boy... Both our boys are coming home. I hope you're right, Dad. Having heard evidence this morning from the local authority social worker, I accept her opinion that neither the grandparents or mother pose a risk of harm. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> However, the same cannot be said of Mr Titchener. The social worker was able to give clear examples of emotional and psychological harm 
that Henry had been subjected to by Mr. Titchener. <laughs> what harm? Yeah, I have found that where the evidence of the social worker and Mr. Titchener diverged, I preferred the evidence of the social worker. Similarly, where the evidence of the other parties and Mr. Titchener diverged, I preferred the evidence of the other parties. No. I therefore find that Mr. Titchener posed and continues to pose a risk of harm to the boys, including a risk of physical harm as he had been violent towards their mother. Not true. Simply not true. I find that these children should live with their mother. My baby. With the support and assistance of their grandparents. The original applicants in this case. At last. <laughs> oh, Helen. They're coming home. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Given that I have found that Mr. Titchener is a risk of harm, and given that the social worker has presented examples and believes there may be a psychological reason for that, I find that contact must be supervised pending a psychological assessment. What? However, I have to take into account that Henry Archer is not the son of Mr. Titchener, whereas Jack plainly is. Given that Henry has been subjected to psychological and emotional harm... <laughs> I do not conclude it is in his interests to spend any time with Mr. Titchener. <laughs> Jack, on the other hand, has a right to contact with his father as long as it is safe. In this case, I am not convinced it is safe to allow unsupervised contact with Jack. This <laughs> can't be! You got it wrong! You're all wrong! Uh, hang on, I'm getting confused. Did, did Mum want a cappuccino? Mochaccino. Don't stress, I've got it. Great. Uh, oh, 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 I've spilt half of Dad's tea. Oh, he won't care. Look at Helen, that almost looks like her old <laughs> smile. Yeah. Do you think I should have brought champagne? We'll open some at home. I can't believe it's finished. Oh, it is. It truly is. I knew the judge would see sense. You got what you deserved, love. The right result. Oh, oh. <laughs> Come on, Pat. Group oh, hug. Oh. Oh, it just doesn't seem real. Hi, everyone. Anna, you were amazing. Just doing my job. They had no chance against you. You were very impressive. We're all so relieved. Oh, I can tell. <laughs> I still feel overwhelmed. Well, it's a lot to take in, I know. We'll have to go back in shortly to sort out the contact arrangements. Do you think that'll be straightforward? Well, I'd hope so. Well, surely Rob can't influence a judge now. No, not at all. This is simply about organising contact for Jack. Because of the way babies bond with adults, contact will probably be little and often. And as Jack doesn't know Rob, the priority will be to find someone to supervise who the baby already knows. So you and Tony are the obvious candidates. Oh, thank goodness. And Helen, you'll be able to pick Henry up later today. Today? Really? Absolutely. <sighs> that was the final hurdle, Helen. You've won. You're properly free. I can't wait to see you. Oh, we know, <laughs> love, we know. Well, I'll, um, I'll see you in there. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Anna. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Darling. It's all right, Helen, it's all right. <laughs> Teas and coffees oh. for everyone. Oh. Dad, this oh. is yours. Ta. Here, I've got a tissue if you want us. <laughs> Thanks. And here's your drink. Oh, lovely, Tom. Tea's exactly what I need. <laughs> Tom, how come I've only got half a cup? <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous that I can't be there when you see him. I mean, I'm his grandmother. Yes, I know. Who's that? Uh, it's Justin Elliott. He wants to see me next week. Oh, about the job, no doubt. That's positive news, isn't it? Uh, he hasn't mentioned a start date. Oh, the details will come later, I'm sure. No, something doesn't feel right. Well, you mustn't be paranoid, Robert. Remember, you're hardly in the best frame of mind at the moment. I haven't signed a contract yet. Who knows, I might not even have a job. Oh, I'm sure Justin is a man of his word. I don't know anything anymore, Mother. <laughs> Look at them all, crowing, jabbering away as if nothing's happened. What did I ever do to deserve this? You haven't put a foot wrong, Robert. Helen's lawyer had the judge in her pocket from the start. Did you see her making eyes at him at the access meeting? Oh, I know her sort perfectly well. Three hours on a Sunday and one hour in the week. How will he ever know me? 
I, I just... Can't bear it. Robert? Robert, where are you going? To the car. Oh. Ursula? Ah, you. Are you happy now? I beg your pardon? You've destroyed him. He's lost everything. Everything because of your daughter. How dare you? What? You should be ashamed of yourself. Ashamed of him. I your son not. is a disgusting human being. And you, you've colluded with it all. Sitting back while he goes round terrorising, abusing women like Helen and Jess for no reason at all except to feed his sad, sorry ego. Oh, don't you speak to me like that. I've finished, actually. And would you please have all of Henry's things ready? I shall be round to collect him at six o'clock sharp. Anna, don't say you were going to sneak off. No, I'm just heading home. I need to finish packing. Mum and I are going on holiday to Austria. Oh, how lovely. You deserve a break. I, um... I got you this, oh. to say thank you. Oh, you didn't have to buy me anything. Oh, I wanted to. Well, that's very kind. I'll open it later. <laughs> sure. I, um, don't quite know what to say. Thank you doesn't cut it somehow. The judge made the right decision. I'm just pleased to have been a small part of making that happen. No, no. You went beyond the call of duty. I realise that. I wasn't easy. <laughs> well... Let's just say this has been a special one for many reasons. So, what's next? Well, apart from going on holiday with my mother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. And to be honest, I don't want to make any plans. Look, I'll, I'll let you get on. Oh, thanks again, Anna. <laughs> oh, you're a good woman. And so are you, Helen. Now go and get your son. You okay, Kirsty? Yeah, I'm fine. Right then. Who's for a drop more? Oh. Helen? Oh, no thanks. I've already had some and I'm still breastfeeding. Oh, Kirsty. Oh, not for me, thanks, Tony. I think we're all right, Dad. Okay. Good. Well, um, welcome home, Helen, Henry, and Jack. <laughs> We've had some tough times in this family, and the last few months have been among the toughest. Helen, our beautiful girl. When I think of all the suffering you've been through... Oh, Tony, it's OK, Dad. <clears throat> we, we all know it's going to take time to heal. But that's all right, we'll get there. Bridge Farm feels like a proper home again now that you're all back here. And, and soon, Helen, you'll start to look forward to the future. We, we all will. And we'll have happy times again with you and the boys. I want you to know I'm very proud of you. Because you're brave and strong. And most of all, because you're ours. Anyway, let's all raise a glass to our Helen. 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 Thank you, all of you, so much. Oh, Dad. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, you, Kirsty, you, you literally saved my life. And I just want to spend time here, in my home, with you, my loved ones, <laughs> and Henry and Jack. <clears throat> and you're right, Dad. Sometime soon. It will be OK again. Yes. I know it will. Mummy, can I have a drink too? <laughs> I'm coming, Henry. <laughs> Thanks for the lift, Tom. You're welcome. You must be tired. I'm shattered. It's been quite a day. Uh, quite a week. Yeah. You've been such a good friend to Helen, to all of us. If we hadn't had your support, I don't know what would have happened. I'm not taking any credit. Well, you should. Rob took all her fight away and she needed somebody to keep fighting for her and you did that. 
Anyone would have done the same. No, they wouldn't. It's you, Kirsty. Look, I'll um, see you soon. Uh, yeah, OK. Night. Kirsty. Yeah? I don't want you to go. Tonight, I mean. Does that make sense? I think so. Wait, stop. Uh, uh, look, I didn't... Um, I shouldn't have done that. I'm really sorry. No, Tommy. It's OK. But you can't think I'll fall for you again. Because I won't. I, I'm sorry. I, I just... Stop I, talking. What was that for? This moment. It's only for now. Of course. <sighs> Do you want me to come in?